folks, it's Chuck, Chuck Newt with Chuck's a Cooking. And I'm going to do something a little different from my previous videos. I'm going to do a little cooking video here. With I'm going to show you how I go about making my homemade pizza. And uh, I do it all. I make the crust, I make the sauce, um, everything. So, um, this is going to take a little time. Stay tuned and follow along. Okay folks, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing here is to make the dough and it's some pretty simple ingredients. I will add a couple extras from the recipe, although for the most part when you're baking, you want to follow the recipes pretty closely. Uh, in fact, very closely because uh, baking is pretty much a science. Now, most of the time, for me personally, uh, when I have a recipe sitting in front of me, that's usually kind of a starting place um, because I like to taste and add as I think as I see fit usually and so uh, you know so if I'm learning to cook something I'll start with a recipe but as I'm cooking it I will taste it and if I say hey it could use let's say more garlic or more salt or more pepper or whatever then the recipe calls for then I have no problem I will certainly add it or if you know if it's you know something you know odd um, one of the biggest helps that I have found in my cooking life is to learn the flavors of various herbs and spices and that way if you know what the flavors are and what they will do in a recipe then you can know uh, maybe uh, whatever it is you're making would taste a little better with some more oregano or, or whatever, whatever you you know whatever you think uh, and so that's how I go about doing most of my cooking however baking is a science and relies on, uh, some of it relies on fermentation. Uh, a lot of other stuff can use uh, baking powder, baking soda to get things to rise properly. But if you don't follow the recipe correctly, then it's just not gonna turn out right. And so now in this recipe, the recipe actually does not call for any sugar, um, but I am going to add a half a teaspoon in my water. I'm gonna make a, a little yeast slurry and by adding the uh, sugar into the, into the water when I add the yeast into it basically that's going to cause it to bloom is what they call it uh, and that's when it goes from being a uh, kind of inactive I mean it's, I know it's active dry yeast but uh, it's kind of dormant when it's in the package and then when you put it in there with sugar the sugar actually gives it something to eat and also the sugar the yeast metabolizing the sugar is what gives it, uh, but will produce bubbles in your bread, um, or in this case, uh, a pizza crust. Now I don't want to get it too uh, bubbly because we're not making a we're not making a loaf of bread here. We are making a pizza crust, but a, a good pizza crust can have still have some uh, small air bubbles in it, and for that reason, I'm not going to add a lot of sugar because I don't want the yeast uh, so active that they're uh, making a big loaf of bread that has, you know, larger, larger bubbles in, in, in into the loaf, so to speak. And um, so, I'm not going to do that. All right, I am going to do that, but I'm not going to add too much. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm probably going to add a little. Um, um, I like to add some garlic into my pizza dough, um, simply because, you know, pizza is um, Italian kind of a thing. And so I have no problem adding a little bit of garlic into the pizza dough. So let me get turned around. Let me get the camera focused on my work spot here, and uh, we'll show you where we're going with it. Stand by. Okay. So before you get started here, the very first thing you need to do is have yourself a package of active dry yeast. And uh, once you've got that, you need to. Uh, Look on the, probably on the back, but you need to look for an expiration date. In this particular case, it says that this expires, maybe you can see this, expires September 2018. And, you know, this is uh, 1st of uh, July 2017, so it's well within its uh, using range. Now, as I told you, well, what we got here is two thirds of a cup of lukewarm water. And I'm going to take a half a teaspoon of granulated sugar here and get it out of the box 
All right, that looks close enough. So we're gonna kind of dissolve that into the, stir it up and dissolve it into that water. And then we are going to take this yeast. Now the recipe calls for a half of a uh, tablespoon of yeast into this. And there's much more, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to guess that there's probably uh, a full tablespoon in one of these packages. So, I'm going to kind of guesstimate how what a half a package is. And the reason why it only uses half a package is because you do, we're not making a loaf of bread and we don't really want all that uh, CO2 produced. That's what, that's what is produced when uh, uh, when yeast ferments sugar, and uh, if you naturally um, produce a bottle of beer, which means that you don't use a machine to put uh, put the CO2 into the bottle, you actually leave a little bit of sugar or add a little bit of sugar into the bottle, and then the yeast, and then cap it, and the yeast will eat that. Um, We'll eat that sugar that you put in there and we'll actually carbonate the bottle of beer um, um, as it sits. And you gotta leave it sit for a couple weeks and allow, to allow it to do its thing. Now because the CO2 can't escape the bottle, then it is forced into solution in the beer and that's how it's carbonated naturally. Now, you know, the machines, they pump the CO2 into the bottle at the same time they put the beer in there and so that's that's the other way of going about it. So we're going to set this over here to the side and we're going to let that work for a little bit. The next thing I want to do is start measuring out my um, ingredients here. The uh, my flour and now the recipe calls for two cups of uh, all-purpose flour. Now I have found that I like to add a little bit of whole wheat flour simply because I like the texture of having the whole wheat flour in there. So what I'm going to do here, I've got uh, some unbleached all-purpose flour. And I'm going to take and put a one whole cup of that in here. That's a one whole, that's one cup. And then this one is a half cup. So I'm going to take this half cup and I'm going to let that, I'm going to put this in the uh, in here as well. Then I'm going to take a half a cup of the whole grain flour or whole wheat flour and we're going to put that in to go with it. Now I'm just kind of stir this up a little bit, get it mixed up. And I'm going to kind of make a little pocket down in here into it. And the next thing we want is, uh, it says one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of oil. Now I'm going to use extra virgin olive oil here because again, it's Italian, so why not use some authentic stuff here? There we go. One tablespoon plus one teaspoon. Now on top of that, I'm going to add a healthy teaspoon of minced garlic. You know, I, you know, I know you can sit and mince your own garlic and all that, but I have found that, that store-bought minced garlic, in most cases, works just fine. And so, there you go. You see how easy that was? I didn't have to worry about mincing it myself. So that we're done with, we're done with the sugar, we're done with the flour. Now let me look at the recipe real quick over here. Okay, so that's all we need for now. So what I'm going to do while the uh, uh, yeast is blooming is I'm going to put some of this stuff away that I've got out and uh, let that yeast bloom for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And uh, I'm going to work on this uh, beer that I've got here and uh, get some of this stuff put away. So stick with me. I'll be right back. All right, 
right, so we're back again. And one thing that I forgot out of the recipe here, that's real simple to put in, is one teaspoon of, one teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna use some uh, pretty fine granulated uh, sea salt here. And that's about a teaspoon right there. So that was real simple to put in there. Now then, if we come back and we look at our yeast here, you see how it's kind of uh, foamy on the top, and that's because the that's because the uh, yeast is working in there. And so we're going to put about half of this water into this flour to start with. I like that. Remember that was two thirds of a cup of lukewarm water, and we're going to just begin mixing that in here by hand. Now you don't have to use gloves like I'm using. Um, I know a lot of people on some of these videos, they say they get complaints because they use their hands in their cooking or whatever. Well, let me tell you, people live for thousands of years with their hands in their food. And you know, as long as you wash your hands before you start, I think you're perfectly fine. The only reason I'm doing it because as you can see here, once you start making bread, which is essentially what we're making, uh, it, it likes to stick real well. Kind of like when you're, uh, well, let's say, bread and chicken or something like that, you, you can uh, definitely get your hands all gooeyed up with the flour. Now, once upon a time ago, before I had kids, I was actually an award-winning home brewer. So that's how I know a little bit of something about brewing beer. Uh, I was pretty good at it one time. Um, nowadays my interests for the most part have moved over to uh, barbecue and if you've seen any of my other videos in regards to uh, my building my uh, smoker and everything you'll know that that's where I've been putting my energies at and I'll just tell you that um, Working in barbecue and beer at the same time, um, if you're the hands-on person, it's just not gonna work too well together. And the reason being is because they both are very time consuming. So in order to try to be a master of either one of them, you really need to devote all your time into one, you know, in a case like that, you have to make a decision what you're going to do, one or the other. Now, over the course of the years, I kind of lost all my brewing equipment and everything, so I didn't have what I don't have, or didn't have all the uh, equipment that I needed, and my son said something about becoming a chef. Uh, and so I thought, so that's kind of the reason why I, I couldn't actually help him become a chef because while I am a pretty good cook, I don't have any um, formal education in being a, a chef. But I can turn out some pretty mean barbecue. So that's the reason I went the direction I went. Because I thought maybe if I can get a barbecue business started, then I would have something to leave my well, my daughter too. My, my daughter might end up interested in it. I wouldn't have any, I don't have any clue what she's thinking in her pretty little head, but I wouldn't certainly, uh, certainly would not discourage her from getting into it if that's what she wants to do. So we're kneading this all together and trying to get a good go going here. And I think I'm gonna have to add just a little bit more water. You see, I've still got some loose flour down here in the bottom. That's not what we want. We want a, well, kind of a semi, a semi sticky dough. So let me get just a little bit of more warm water here. Now we don't want to add very much at all at any one time. Just a few little drops like that. Now my experience with dough 
or using whole wheat flour has been that whole wheat flour seems to me maybe absorbs a little more water than regular uh, all-purpose flour. Now that you can see we got a good dough going here now and uh, it's you can see that it's really picking up the there's no loose stuff laying in, in the in the bottom of the bowl so now what we want to do is to begin kneading this and we want to knead this for 10 minutes so we're just going to do like this I'm going to knead it back and forth this helps just ensure that all of the Well, it helps ensure that the gluten in the dough is well formed and makes it stretchy. Now, you can see how I'm not leaving any dough on the surface of this. Uh, here's a pastry mat, and uh, works very good for you know pie crusts and such as that. And it's got these circles all uh, on, the, on the opposite side of the, the working side but it shines through and it has these measurements for different pie pans and whatnot but it also works great for um, kneading bread on and whatnot and, uh, and uh, all this good stuff so now we're supposed to do this for 10 minutes I do have a mixer over there that I could have done this in a mixer with the dough hook but I didn't, and there's certainly nothing wrong with doing it this method. Basically, you're just continually folding it in on itself as you go along like this. But you see how the dough begins to get stretchy. And that's the gluten working in the bread dough. In fact, sometimes when I uh, am making something, that does not require whole wheat flour. And I want to add, or I want to use whole wheat flour. I will actually buy gluten at the store and use that to add it to the mix um, in order to have a well, a well formed gluten. Um, I'm trying to think what it is, and there's something in specific where I have done that before, and I'm trying to think of what it was exactly that I did it with. So you just use the heel of your hand, push it down in the dough, and you see how I just keep continually turning it. And if you think it's a little getting a little dry, you can always add just a few more drops of water. Um, now this one I like pretty well, but I am going to add just a couple drops of water, just like that. Now you see how I'm getting slippery on the on the what you call it here. The, that's because it's almost kind of making like a little thin film of mud, almost. I would call it a slurry, is what it actually is of flour and water. But now, my, I'm beginning to get that all worked into the into the dough here, and I'm really much more happier with it. Okay, so I think that's about ten minutes worth. And so that should have our yeast and everything well mixed into our little ball of goodness here. Now what we're going to do, what we need to do is put just a little bit of oil in here. We just want to, we just want to coat this, this ball of um, bread dough here. And what that does is helps keep the water from evaporating out of it, which we don't want. We want to have our moisture in our bowl here. And we're just going to leave that in this um, 
hold for now. And we're gonna let this sit for like an hour and a half. Yes, for an hour and a half uh, until it doubles in size. Okay, so what I've got here is what's called uh, these flour, flour sack cloth, which I use for baking purposes. And why it's in the paper or a plastic bag is because it actually does have flour in it. You'll see falling out there. Um, in fact, it's got too much flour in it. All right, we're going to cover that just like so. And it says to leave it set in a warm place. Well, I'll tell you what, it's like 85 degrees outside. And as long as it's not in the direct sunlight, I can just sit it outside for a while. Make sure you set your timer to uh, measure off uh, 90 minutes. So we're going to leave it here for now. And when we come back, we'll go with that. Okay, so what are we up to now? Well, I got some pepperoni here. And I'm going to get this uh, going. Okay. A medium high heat on a skillet here. And I take these pepperoni and I just kind of lay them in there like so. And you might want to look, might wonder what I'm doing. You might think I'm crazy. Well, I think I am. But anyway, I lay these in here and I am going to render the fat out of them because you're going to be amazed maybe and how much fat comes out of these pepperonis and um, this one here is one for the cook and so I put those in there like this let them cook down and the reason I do this is because I found that it helps keep my pizza from getting soggy By taking all the grease that you're going to see come out of this I think I'm going to turn my camera around to this side, this angle because I'm kind of in my uh, own light here it's like. so while this is getting started and going I will get this camera turned around now, this is a uh, 6 ounce package of um, pepperoni. I probably got about, oh, I'm going to guess I probably put at least three ounces, maybe maybe three and a half ounces of the pepperoni in there. And you can see already it's already starting to produce some oil in the bottom of the pan. So let me get this turned off and I'll get right back with you. Okay, so now the, the purpose of this is not to fry these, not to really fry these pepperonis. But, as you can see, we're getting a lot of grease coming out of these things, which is exactly what the plan is. And then here in a little bit, we'll pull those out, we'll set them onto a paper towel. And we'll move on from there. Because we're not done cooking it before we make up this pizza. And you will. Now I look down here and I'll, you can see down in the corner of that pan, there's a whole lot of grease in this pan that if I had not done this, would have ended up in my pizza. And, um, well, for one, not only does it, by rendering it out like this, not only does it help to not make, make your pizza and not get soggy, most of us just really don't need all that fat in our diet. There will still be plenty of fat to be had in this pizza, trust me, you will see. Okay, so I'm going to get a plate with a paper towel. And I can turn that heat off for the time being. And we're just going to lay these out, let them drain, do their thing for a little bit. Now they will, now they won't get exactly crispy. But they will be a whole lot more mm, stiff once they 
cool down here. But they won't turn into a crispy piece of bacon. So there you go. And as I say, there you, you know, there's, um, I'll say a couple good ounces of rendered fat in the bottom of this pan that we really don't need to eat. So stick with me, we're not done yet. All right, now what we got going on here? I've got a slab of ham here. Um, I'm gonna use about half of this, I think. Maybe slightly less. I'm gonna take the smaller of the two sides there. I'm just gonna cube this up pretty fine. Just like that. Now this, I do not need to render any of the fat out of it. It's already a pre-cooked sliced ham here. In fact, it's one for me. That will go on our pizza as well. For the time being, I'm going to get myself a bowl. We'll put this in here. Now, this is actually a cutting mat that I've got on top of the uh, um, pastry mat that I need. So there we go with that. Now then, what I've got, beer right there, but what I've got here is actually frozen bacon. And I learned this trick, I think from a cooking show somewhere. And you take yourself a good sharp knife, a, a large knife, and then you just can cut off ends like this. That makes nice and bacon. So much easier. I'm gonna do a little work here in doing this. Now you can see it breaks up real nice in the very small pieces, but once you got to this, you can go ahead and dice it up if you wish. So there you want bacon. I'll put this back in the freezer bag, and I will stick it back into the freezer. For the next time, I will dice up bacon. I have a grocery store here in town. I can buy bulk bacon in. Uh, 10 pound boxes. It's actually very tasty bacon. And uh, so I buy the 10 pound box and I break it into packages in approximately, you know, what I'm gonna say, pound and a half, two pounds like that that you just saw. In fact, that was a fresh one, never been cut on before. And, uh, you know, sometimes I will pull a whole package out and use it for. BLTs or breakfast or whatever. I don't eat a lot of I don't use a lot of bacon for breakfast, but occasionally I get a taste for it. And uh, we'll do that. For the most part I use bacon for seasoning and other things. I like it in collard greens, uh, I like it in green beans, that kind of stuff. I like, I like it on pizza that I'm getting ready to do. So there you go. Now we've got this uh, pretty well broken up into smaller chunks. And we're going to go ahead and render this out here in just a moment. Along with a couple other things I'm going to put in here. I'll do something with this as I can. Which actually will be put back into a freezer bag and it's frozen. So there we go, we've got that. And so stick with me here. Okay, so what do we got going on here? We got our bacon. Now we got a, a, about a half a pound. I didn't weigh that, but I bought about a half a pound of a regular bulk sausage and a half a pound of hamburger here. And we're gonna put all this over here in the pan as soon as I get that uh, grease out of there, the oil out of there from the uh, uh, pepperoni, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our cast iron skillet kind of heating up here. And we're going to throw this bacon in. Throw our sausage in. And our hamburger. And we're going to bring, begin breaking that up real good. this all browned and we're right back with you on this. Okay, so we got this pretty well rendered down now. 
And here that's just a little bit crispy on the on the uh, sausage and hamburger. That's quite all right. It's not going to hurt a thing really when you uh, put it on the pizza. So one thing that I am going to do, I am going to add just a little bit of salt because hamburger does not come pre-salted, even though there is some salt in the uh, um, yeah in the bacon. And we're going to grind a little fresh black pepper on here. And the next thing that's going to happen. I'm going to turn the heat off on that so I don't get popped again. And then we're going to kind of mix that pepper and fall around in there a little bit. But then we're going to we're going to drain this grease out of this as well because once again we do not want all this grease into our pizza. If that were not an issue, I wouldn't be maybe I wouldn't be a I mean, I wouldn't be rendering it out now. So, what I'm do start with, I'm gonna move this over here to this other burner on its angle and let it kind of drain itself out. And then I'll move it over to a plate over maybe on top of our pepperoni over there. And we will um, just kind of. Uh, let it drain into paper towels on top of that. So that is complete. Okay folks, so the next thing we're going to move on to is we are going to make tomato sauce. I don't have tomato sauce up in the cabinet. What I do have, I have a can of tomato paste here. And we're going to go ahead and get this out of the can. Okay, so there's our tomato paste. Now the next thing we're going to put in here is a can of fire roasted tomatoes. Now you got to be careful with this because it says with seasonings. And that's going to be important here in a little bit. And in fact, when you first open the can, you see these are flakes of uh, some sort of uh, seasoning inside in the tomato tomatoes there. So for the start, we're just going to put this can of tomatoes in here. We're going to begin heating it up. As it heats, tomatoes should be, or juices and whatnot, should be released out of the tomatoes and it will help thin down the tomato paste. I like my tomato, my uh, pizza sauce, um, pretty thick. The reason being is because uh, I like tomatoes on it, on my pizza, but I don't want them swimming in sauce. Uh, I don't want the pizza swimming in sauce. So we'll let this heat for a few minutes and we'll see where we're at in a minute. Okay, so I've determined that it needs a little bit more uh, liquid added to it. I happen to have some tomato juice up there in the, uh, in the cabinet. I'm gonna put just a little bit in to start. Now, if you don't have any tomato juice, Water will work and not hurt it at all, especially with that tomato paste in there. I mean, really, um, you know, the optimum the optimum would have been that I had uh, tomato sauce up there, and I would have made my own um, sauce from there, and I wouldn't have had to add any tomatoes and all this other stuff. Well, tomato paste works great, although it doesn't quite taste the same because while the tomatoes I put in here had some seasoning and stuff in there, tomato paste has no seasoning. It, uh, and most of your tomato sauces that you buy at the grocery also have seasonings in them. Um, and so if you just put the paste in there, it's really going to be kind of a bland tomato flavor. And uh, so that's the reason why. With the, with the tomato paste, I have gone ahead and added these tomatoes in here, um, the fire roasted tomatoes. Now they have some spice in there, and uh, here in a little bit, I'm going to take a good taste of it and see what I think of it. Uh, I read the contents of the thing, and it says that it has garlic, uh, garlic powder, tomato powder, <laughs> yeah, onion powder, and um, 
onion juice in it and uh, then other spices. It doesn't tell me exactly what those other spices are. I suspect highly that they're some sort of um, herbs, um, something like parsley, maybe a little uh, thyme or something like that. And uh, very shortly, I'll be giving this a taste. We'll add just a little bit more juice to this. Now once again, we don't have juice. By all means, water will work, especially with tomato paste. Now we're getting kind of the consistency I want. Maybe just a little bit thinner yet, but not a lot. I mean, we want to spread, but like I said, I don't want the other ingredients on top of the pizza swimming in tomato uh, sauce. Although I do like my pizza kind of saucy. I like to taste the tomatoes in it. And so by having it rather thick, I can achieve that. Get the tomato flavor. There we go. See now, just a little bit added in there. Kind of made a difference in the thickness of this tomato sauce that I have made. Well, I'm adding this very slowly because I just really don't want to take it too far, which I think could happen real easy. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're pretty much there. I'm gonna taste it for salt and other spices. Let's see how it is. Okay, I'm definitely use some salt. Turn this heat down just as far as it'll go. Just enough heat to keep it warm. And now the goal is to just flavor our. I'm gonna put about a half of half a uh, teaspoon of salt in there. Again, I can always add more, but I can't take it out once it's in there. Well, that was uh, sea salt, but you know, regular table, table salt work. That's what you got. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my spoon off. It's a little better. Well, I can do use. Still just a little more salt. So I'm gonna go with another half a teaspoon, like that. And it goes. Okay, so now I'm clean this spoon off again. That's better. Now next thing we're gonna do is to take this. Um, minced, minced garlic that we've got here. I find my measuring spoon, and it was in the sink from when we made the, our, from where we made our, um, you know, uh, dough for the pizza crust. So I'm putting one teaspoon in, teaspoon in here. Again. With anything I put in here, we can always add more, but we can never take it out if we put too much in. So we'll let that kind of get in there, get heated a little bit. I'm gonna put a little, not a lot, but a little bit of uh, black pepper in here. I love black pepper, it's one of my favorite spices. Well, so is garlic. I think garlic can go on just about any kind of meat. Sometimes even chicken, though I don't use it a lot on chicken. Clean my spoon again, take another taste. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get there. I don't think it needs any more garlic. Now I'm gonna put some thyme in here. We'll say about another, that's about a half a teaspoon right there. Now you want to Kind of grind your, any kind of um, 
herb there, the dried herb. You want to kind of grind them up in your hand a little bit. That helps to release the flavors out of the leaves. And I'm going to do the same thing with some uh, a little bit of basil here. Again, I'm going to go with about a half a teaspoon. Kind of grind it in again. Break up those leaves a little bit so it can release its oils and flavors into the sauce. We'll stir that in. Now, I'm going to just take a couple little shakes. A little bit of, I should say just a little bit of uh, celery flake. That's just maybe a quarter teaspoon right here. Just a little bit. So what we want to do here is layer all kinds of flavors into this to make it more complex. And the way to do that easily is with your herbs and spices. Now, as I told you before, I guess I don't... I thought I put celery in there, but I guess I did not. Yes, I did. So, one last one is going to be a little bit of rosemary. All these things go, yeah, go well, and I'm going to go with another about a quarter table teaspoon, teaspoon of the rosemary there. And again, we're going to crunch up the leaves a little bit, and then put it in. We're going to stir all this in. Now then, the goal is to get these flavorings in here. We're going to let this heat for a little bit. Remember, I turned the, I turned the heat very low on this. And we want to let this go for just a little bit. But we're going to have to stir very often so we don't burn it in the pan. And because we're going to let it go for a little while, I'm going to put just a little bit more of the tomato juice in here. Because some of that's going to evaporate out. We've got to account for that. And we're going to let this heat for a little bit. Let's see how a lot of this, some of those spices didn't make it into the pan. I made it on my stove top here. So we're going to let that go for, I'm going to say, 10 minutes or so. And in that 10 minutes, we'll just have to stir it probably four or five times because we really don't want it scorching on the bottom of the pan. Now, and obviously, you look at this, there, unless we've got a really big pizza, this is going to be more than enough sauce for one pizza. And you can freeze it. It'll work just fine. You freeze it and let it thaw out, and you can have another batch for another pizza. Maybe even two more pizzas, the way this is looking. So, purpose of heating, continuing to heat this, is simply to help the oils in these various uh, herbs come out of the leaves and get actually into the sauce. So I'm gonna cut this off for just a minute while we heat, while this heats up. It's not very exciting watching me stir a pan, so I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, guys. Well, and ladies, um, I've decided that. This is a little on the bright side. What I mean by that is it's acidic or tart. And so I'm going to put in one teaspoon of sugar to start. See if we can't help cut this uh, sweetness down, or uh, sweet tartness down. And because uh, the salt did nothing, absolutely nothing, to this tartness. I really do like my tomato products tart, uh, a little on the tart side, but this is tart enough that it's kind of distracting actually. We're going to see if we can knock that down just a little bit. But we certainly don't want our pizza sauce sweet. It's definitely better. We're going to go for one more. Now, 
Yeah, you see how thick that is? Almost more like a almost more like a marinara sauce. Yeah, so we're going a little more yet. I mean, let's put what it takes. We don't want to go. We don't want to go too far. As of right now, it's not a problem. It is not sweet. One more taste. Okay, so I think I can live with this. Now. I'm going to let this cool. I'm actually going to make this pizza tomorrow. And, uh, so we'll be continuing on. But overnight, these flavors from these spices and uh, herbs are going to come out, continue to come out of the leaves and whatnot and help to flavor this uh, sauce. Much in the way uh, chili or a soup is often the better the second day. And that's because all the flavors had a chance to come out and, and, and mix together and, and just makes it much more flavorful. So I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to let this cool. And uh, we'll get back with it. All right, folks. So now we're going to get ready to go with our fresh vegetables here. And I think I want about a half a sweet onion here. Now, this particular onion is a Vidalia onion. And they come from Vidalia, Georgia. And I was stationed down that way a long time ago in the army. But that's where I learned about Vidalia onions. And they are about the best sweet onion that you can find. Now, like I said, I want about half an onion here. I'm gonna cut that in half. Set that one off to the side. And I'll kind of just peel that off real easy like this. And just when I say it real easy, it starts to be a little bit of a pain. There we go. Let's get all the skin off. Now, I don't want to make this dice too small on this onion, but slicing the onion like this, or dicing it I should say, really saves some wear and tear on the eyes if you've got a hot onion. Now the uh, Vidalia's don't tend to be too hot as far as your eyes are concerned and whatnot. But you see how fast this dices up an onion. Just like that. Perfect for perfect for pizza, spaghetti sauce, anything like that. Of course you can do the same thing and make it a much finer chop if that's what you want. And sometimes I do if I'm putting it in like meatloaf or something like that where I, you know, big chunks will help, would uh, help to cause the meatloaf to fall apart. Now I'm going to get a paper plate over here, or I take that back, I'm going to get one of these uh, plastic bowls I've got here. I'm just going to put that in there for now. Got a little piece of onion skin here that I really don't want in my pizza if I can keep from it. It's not going to kill anybody if it's in there, but no sense in putting it in there if I can keep from it. All right, there's that. Now I got one jalapeno here. I have no clue how hot this jalapeno is. So I'm going to stick it on my tongue. It has a little heat. I'm going to try to dice this up as well. I like a little heat on my pizza. If after I cook it and I want more, I can always add more heat. Um, sometimes though, I get jalapenos from the grocery store that just really do not have a lot of heat in them. Um, I like jalapeno flavor. Um, I also like to have a little heat. Now, I got some peppers over there that I could really add the heat. I mean, knock her to your knees heat if I wanted to. Um, what are those called? Uh, Carolina Reapers. I've got some dried Carolina Reapers over there. And I believe they are still the hottest pepper in the world. 
Now what I do with them, I put them into a coffee grinder and grind them up in the powder. And then I will use the powder on foods, but I have to be very careful. Because like I said, it'll knock you down with heat if you aren't careful. If you don't believe me, just look for some uh, Carolina Reaper Challenge videos on YouTube here. Okay, that will work. I'm just going to throw it right in there because it's all going to go in the same place here in a little bit. I don't mind the seeds in here because as I told you before, I like heat in my I like spicy foods. So a little bit of heat in my on my pizza, not gonna bother me at all. Now the smell pepper, kind of like the onion. I probably only want about half of this thing. So I'm gonna cut like this, there, and I think that's actually closer to three quarter, but we'll go with it. We'll take that little bit of seed core out of there. So. Now these, these seeds I do not want in my pizza so much. Because bell pepper seeds, they really just don't add anything to it. Now the way I go about this is just turn it upside down, or open side up. And just go ahead and take this right here. Be careful with your fingertips when you get down to the end. And one more slice there. That. That one. Now, if you just kind of curl your fingertips back up underneath your knuckles there, and that'll help keep your finger out of the way of your knife here. Now, kind of line these up like so. I think that's pretty, pretty good dice on this. I think I'm satisfied with it. Again, that's totally up to you. Some people would have left the big long strips uh, before I uh, actually chop them into the dice there. That's fine, if that's what you want, be my guest. This uh, pizza project, you know, it's kind of uh, one of these things of your own making of whatever you desire on your pizza. Some people like uh, to have the uh, pineapple on there and other other toppings. And if that's what you like on your pizza, be my guest. I'm more of a traditionalist, kind of. Uh, you know, I'm one of those people that, um, well, I like my pizza to taste like traditional pizza. Um, I have tried pineapple on my pizza before, and it's all right. It's all right, and I can eat it, but for the most part, I prefer traditional pizza. So that's the way I make it. All right, I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna kind of get things organized and cleaned up a little bit here. And I'll be right back and we're gonna start rolling out the crust and putting the pizza together. Okay, so yesterday, you might remember I told you that I was going to do this uh, pizza on the second day. Well, today is that second day. Now I put this uh, uh, bread dough, pizza crust dough actually in the uh, refrigerator in a Ziploc baggie for overnight. Now it's been sitting out for a few hours now and you can see it's come back up to size and still nice and soft and pliable. And so we're gonna take this out of here. So we got a little bit of flour in there. I accidentally dumped in there yesterday. We're gonna kind of flour up our surface here. Now if you recall, this is a pastry, um, pastry mat here. And this largest circle here is a 16 inch circle. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. Now it's not gonna bother me if I go a little too big. Um, Cause one thing that I've learned in doing this, remember I told you about gluten yesterday, and what I've learned when you stretch out a piece of crust like this, um, it kind of wants to spring back on you. And I'm actually looking for a 15 inch crust. And the reason being is because 
my grate that I'm going to be cooking this on is only about 15 inches across. So, I want to be here. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going to go just a little bit over. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. Now, just like bread in the oven, when you go to cooking on this, it will actually rise as you're cooking it, just like bread will. Yeah, but this is probably, I'm going to say not much more than a sixteenth inch thick right now. But I'm going to go around, all the way around here, I'm going to kind of put a little bit of edge on this. Because we got a whole lot of toppings that we're going to put on here. So there we go. That reminds me of uh, doing the edge on a uh, pie, a regular fruit pie. Okay, so there we go. Now uh, we'll just make sure that we're not stuck. Oh, okay, a little bit, but you actually want to peel this up over there. In fact, I just go like that. I'm going to get a little more flour put up under here. Hold on just one minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so you see I got some more flour here that I'm putting on the um, pastry sheet here. Pastry, uh, and it's not, the purpose is not to um, add flour to the cooking for the dough. It's simply to help keep the dough from sticking to the, the pastry mat. There we go. Yeah, see how this thing wants to kind of shrink on you as you're working with it. Yeah. Now that it's not stuck to the mat, that actually helps allow it to do that. But I really want to keep this, you know, just a little under 16 inches. I can I can actually go just hair under the 16 inches with the degree I'm going to be cooking this one. So now you may remember the pizza sauce that we made yesterday. And so here we are. We're going to spoon it real quick. And we're going to, oh by the way, I have tasted this. And it is wonderful today. I was just where I wanted it. It's a little chunkier. Because remember the diced tomatoes that we I put in here. I don't have any mice in my pocket, so it wasn't me, it was me. And you can put as much or a little of the uh, tomato sauce on your pizza as you wish. Now you see that this is fairly thick, and that's the way I wanted it. I want the tomato flavor, but I don't want it swimming. And by swimming, I mean by too juicy. Well, by the way, you could actually bake off this uh, pizza crust by itself, um, much like you would bake off a pie crust uh, prior to putting any toppings on it, if you wish. Okay, now that's about got it. Now if you wish, or I wish, you see I got quite a lot of uh, pizza sauce left in here. Okay, well what I'll do is I'll end up freezing this and uh, I'll have it. I won't have to make a, another batch for the next pizza. We'll sit that over here out of the way, and so we move on. And the next thing we're going to move on to, we'll grab out of the refrigerator, is some of my other toppings. You remember we did, uh, I did, pepperoni, and other meats here. And I put those all in a bowl yesterday, and then I went and stuck them in the refrigerator. And so we're going to spread these pepperoni and other the other meat mixture onto the pizza here and come back out here now we kind of got everything all around if you can see any you know uh, spots where it got a lot of space like that right there Just put in a 
piece here and there until you get it all out. Okay, so I know there's a spot somewhere for this. Looks good. Okay, so then we've got our hamburger, our sausage, and our bacon that we cooked up yesterday. Cooked up, drained off. And again, you can put as much or as little of this on your pizza as you wish. I kind of like my meaty. Oh, I just found another piece of uh, pepperoni that slid in there from somewhere. So there we go. That was one pound of, uh, of or half a pound, sorry, of uh, hamburger, half a pound of uh, bulk sausage, and then I have our ham that we diced up yesterday. Now, ham is a very uh, kind of a traditional topping if you're going to go with the uh, pineapple. Another thing that I could have done with my sauce would have been to add some barbecue sauce into it. Give it a little bit of a barbecue flavor if I wished. Or when you make yours, that's the way you like it. And I do occasionally like a, uh, some barbecue sauce on a pizza. I don't do it very often, but it's always an option. trying to stay out of my own light here as much as possible. I don't know how, this is a brand new camera for me, and I don't know how well it adjusts to low light. So, now I, this was that half of a ham steak that I added in here. And so there is all of our meats. So let me get things picked up here a little bit, and we'll continue on. Now, one thing that I've learned in my pizza making days uh, is that I like to put kind of a multiple layers of cheese on it. And the reason being is because as we cook this, it's going to help lock these toppings in. So what I've got here is a pizza blend, which is a uh, finely shredded, low moisture, part skim mozzarella, smoke flavored provolone, Parmesan and Romano cheeses. And so we're going to give this a little, uh, a little cover on here. Now I'm not going to go too heavy here um, because this is not going to be the final um, cheese on this. Like I said, I just use it to help, as it melts, it will help to uh, lock these toppings into the pizza. Cheese is another thing that I really like on my pizza. I am a, um, I call myself a cheeseaholic. I really love cheese. Okay. okay, that's pretty well got a decent little cover on there. I'm gonna set that over to the side for a minute and we're gonna move on. Now then, we've got our peppers and onions and all that good stuff. I need to kind of mix these up a little bit so that when I grab a handful, I got a mixture of everything that's in there. Not too much of one thing. I want, I'd like a, I want some of it, all of it all over the pizza. I like my veggies too. Okay, well that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna save this extra and It'll probably find its way into uh, oh, something like a sausage, egg, and cheese sandwich in the morning or something like that. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more of this cheese. This is a two cup package. As you can see, it's um, stretching pretty good on this pizza. I actually bought another one just in case. Uh, so it's sitting over there in the event I would need it. However, from the looks of things, I don't think I'm going to need it. Now then, what do I got here? I got some mushrooms that are already pre-sliced and everything. And these are what they call baby bella mushrooms. <laughs> and, uh, and those are babies. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, bella mushrooms are uh, baby creminis or something like that and get way bigger than this when they're 
fully matured. Some of those steak size mushrooms. Now I'm going to tell you, when this is done, you see how big these mushrooms are. All these other toppings that I put on here. And I'm going to tell you that you go to eating on this pizza and one slice for a lot of people is going to be a meal. Okay, so there we go. We've got a good, good cover of mushrooms. Kind of the way I like it. And then we're going to come back with some more cheese. Once again, this will just help to, well, helps the flavor of the pizza too, but helps lock these uh, ingredients onto the top of the pizza. Okay, there's not enough of that to save. So it's just going to find its way onto this pizza somehow, somewhere. There you go, two whole cups. Last but not least, I can get it out of here. There we go. Last but not least, I got me a couple tomatoes here. I'm going to scoop this over a little bit, like so. Get my cutting mat back over here. I'm going to, first of all, peel those, uh, the sticker off there. Uh, so slice this tomato. I'll put those right on the top. Learn from that first one. I might want to try these off. All right, a little bit of the juice. I'm even taking the others back off the pizza and just kind of absorbing a little bit of the juice out of them. I really don't want a soggy pizza, especially after I've gone to all the work that I did to help prevent it from being a soggy pizza. Okay, well that's too bad because I got two extra slices here because um, well, maybe just one. So I guess we where that's going. <laughs> okay, so that's the finished product. Well, not quite. It still has to be baked. But as far as putting the pizza together, that is the finished product. So let's show, let me show you where we're going with this. All right, folks, so I'm out here at my grill. As you can see here, I got my charcoal chimney all full, full of charcoal. I got some paper down under there. And this is my, my old uh, break and smoking pit. And this is like the uh, third uh, work surface that I've had on this uh, smoker. And uh, <laughs> there we go, zoom it out a little bit. And uh, so this is where I'm gonna cook this pizza at. Uh, I really uh, I really love this uh, little smoker. And if you watch my other video, you can see you'll have decided to name our Betty Lou over here. Uh, the other smoker that I built or still working on and it is there, um, but for uh, smaller for smaller uh, cook jobs, uh, like personal or family, this thing works just perfectly. So here we are, and we'll get this thing all fired up again. I learned that this uh, camera is not very good at being a left-hand operator. So, there we go. And we'll check back in here in a few minutes. All right, so we got a good hot fire going in here. Ooh, and it is hot. And I'm gonna have to get me a glove on. I'll be right back. So again, as you can see, I got a good heavy glove on. I'm gonna pour this right on down into the bottom there. And get this stuff uh, kind of moved around. Well, I'm going to throw a little wood on there and give it a little smoke, uh, a little wood flavor. Be back in a minute. Okay, so we got some wood on there now and it's going to help heat this up. I want to get up somewhere around 350 um, before I put the pizza on. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, let the uh, grill grates get heated up so I can scrape them off with the grill brush. That's where we're headed. Okay, maybe you can see this. It says, uh, 
ran a little above 350. So we're gonna open it up now. Get the old drill brush here. And right, give it a good so there we go. I'm gonna go get the pizza. I got a few minutes. Okay guys, so I uh, had to transfer this over to my giant um, skillet. Dude, uh, made by Lodge Cast Iron. Um, it didn't come off of that uh, sheet the way I wanted it to, and so it was trying to uh, really deform itself, so I had to uh, put it on there. Let me get in the shade so we can let me see if I can shade it a bit. There you go. Maybe you can see it a little better now. So, at any rate, my pan's a little big for this smoker. So we'll have to see how this turns out. Here you see I can close it most of the way. But we'll just have to uh, play, it, uh, kind of play it by ear, but we're not listening to anything. But uh, you can see down here at the edge, maybe, that you know, I got quite a big gap there. So we're just going to see how this goes. So stick with me. Okay, so 15 minutes in, we're going to uh, open up and take a look at it. Turn our pan around. Yeah, we're starting to get some cheap building going on in here. That's what we want to see. I originally intended to keep this over on this side, but uh, with the pan under it, I've moved it over further than I wanted to if I just had the pizza on the, on the grill grate. So we'll check back in another 15. All right, guys. Well, I just checked it on by uh, checking the crust here. Now we're there. The crust is kind of it's getting there, but the rest of it over around is not so good. So we're gonna we're gonna turn it around one more time here. I'm gonna go for a little. While. I do see that the uh, cheese is melting real good. On there. We're gonna let this go for a little bit longer. We'll be back and check in a few. All right, folks, so there we go. That is a finished pizza. Now, this pan is exceedingly hot. But I'm gonna pull this off of here. And then I'm gonna let it sit right here on this uh, work surface for a little while and let it cool down because uh, even through this glove, I was feeling it. So there we go. Let me get this camera pulled off here. There we go. That's a good looking pizza. Oops. Trying to go back. And if you can see, I can touch the, uh, let's see the crust here. And uh, you can see that it's good and solid in there. And this pan is going to stay hot for quite a while longer yet. Because that baby's cast iron. And uh, it doesn't cool down anytime quick. So that crust is going to continue. Uh, continue on um, baking for a little bit yet. So there we go. Plus, um, Anytime you pull anything directly out of the oven like that, you need to kind of let it uh, rest for a little bit, just like you would if you pulled uh, um, brisket or pulled or pork butts out of the smoker. You gotta let it rest for a little bit and let it come back to itself. So there we go. All right, there we go. So after 15 minutes of sitting, now it's time to cut into it. So, so now by the 15 minutes, the cheese is kind of setting up in it, and you can cut through it without a big problem. There we go. Take plate out here. 
My daughter would be happy to know that I haven't broken a single one of the dishes she picked out for me when she was about six or seven. Now that is a slice of pizza. I might as well just go for two because I know I'm going to eat it anyhow. So there we go. Okay folks, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've really enjoyed help to bring it to you and um, you know, I'd like to bring more to you in the future. So uh, really I'd like you to subscribe and continue watching uh, my channel here and I'll bring more to you. And I gotta give this a taste for you, just to let you know. Mm. That's the payoff. Right there, that's the payoff. It's so good. The crust is not real crispy. It has some tenderness to it, but by all means it's not raw. Now the big uh, pan, the uh, cast iron uh, skillet, I use that for a couple things. If I'm making uh, pizza inside, in the oven, I use that. And if I had done that, I would have taken and put the pizza crust into the bottom of the pan and spread it out in the pan rather than on the uh, pastry sheet, pastry uh, mat. Now, in this case, I had to put it on there in the pan because things didn't quite go as I planned. I really need to get myself a, a piece of stone that'll fit inside my. Uh, inside of my uh, grill out there, smoker actually, um, but you know, that's something for the future, a, a pizza peel would be nice too, but sometimes you do with what you got, and right now I don't have a pizza stone or a pizza peel, so uh, that doesn't stop you from making good pizza, and this is some good stuff right here. Thanks for watching, please hit subscribe, and continue following. Thank you.